an evening. Um, I've got a bunch of songs, sad songs to make you feel better. And uh, here's the first one. set list out in orange pen and under this light I just can't see it at all <laughs> so I'm gonna guess oh yeah okay um does it say here say hello and welcome it says hello and welcome <laughs> to uh another live stream from me pen friend uh used to be known as she makes war so if if you're a pen friend person and you're not familiar with some songs that I play that's because they're from my back catalogue which I encourage you to check out on my uh, website and my shop. Um, this is a song called Devastate Me. It's probably one of the first songs I wrote about the kinds of subjects I wrote about on exotic monsters. I feel like this one and possibly Undone um, were precursors to the songs on exotic monsters. So it seems relevant and fitting. And someone requested it in the Facebook group the other day. And, uh, and I thought, oh yeah, that is a sad song. I'd, I'd forgotten. So, um, no idea where my, where my puppy is. Should I see if I'll see if I'll see if I can get it. Luna? Come. She's going through that phase where she ignores me. She was perfectly well behaved before I went away, and now she just does her own thing. Anyway, um, yeah, this is devastating me.
This is a song for the heavy hearted Lost friends and the dear departed Kiss like a cannibal Handle your alcohol We disappear so quietly Devastate me We're crying out So we get to please Devastate me Sign up and enjoy the static Cheers to you. Thanks so much for coming along. <laughs> oh God. Welcome to the comedy of errors that is my life. I'm just back from a week away. I've forgotten how to do almost everything. <laughs> so this is a song called Dispensable Body. <laughs> Sounds kind of relevant. Dispensable body, knowledge is a curse. Feel the weight of the world, feel the weight of the universe. Gotta keep moving, oh, but I stop listening. Had a hell of a go of it. Now I'm putting my heart first Far away Looking back from this constellation Passed away Adrift on my own
shape of a human born on a thundercloud words in a diary perimeters intact tomorrow's today so click your heels and think of me from the eye of a hurricane you're my safe path back Far away Looking back from my own space station Cast away A drift To the past we go. My wonderful husband is away today, hence me also wrangling dogs whilst doing an online live streamed gig. And um, he's not watching because he's out, I think, in Hamburg probably with some friends, which is as, as it should be. Um, don't go to Germany on a trip and then tune in. That'd be he can watch it later can't he anyway he's not watching right now but i just wanted to say that um i might have told this story before but there's a line in this song that i dedicated to him in the very early days of our relationship which you know in traditional laura relationship land would have been a terrible idea because i would have been lumbered with that line um without the person being a positive influence in my life um in traditional choice making of mine but turned out great and uh, we're celebrating our eighth anniversary in December um, so this song is nearly eight years old it, that's how I know Hey. 
I'm alone, a sober celebration. I was told I feel things too much, but I know it hurts to be touched. Ooh, I crashed down. I burned out along the way on a sunny day with threat of thunder, threat of rain. Ooh, I crashed down. I came round to devastate. Anyway, I let my skin grow paper thin, and that's okay. Cause I see stars. And I I meant to say earlier that I'd love to have a chat with you and read the chat a bit. I'm sitting away from the computer so I can't do that right now. But if you have any questions you'd like to ask me and for me to answer after this song, write them now in the chat and put question in capitals at the beginning so I can quickly see with my, with my old lady eyes because I'm not wearing my glasses. Um, ask me anything. If it's too weird, I won't answer you. <laughs> That's the rule. Um, that's a good rule. There's a link between that song and the next song I'm going to play to you. Again, if you're new to my music, then that song was called Paper Thin. It was on a, um, an album called Direction of Travel. That's right, isn't it? I think so. That came out in 2016, but also 2015, because whenever I put albums out, I usually do pre-orders, and that one was actually funded through Pledge Music. Long pre-order. So, some of you have had that song for a long time. Thank you very much. So you will know that I had a very special guest singer on that song in the shape of Tanya Donnelly from Belly, Throwing Muses, The Breeders, etc. Which was very exciting, of course. Um, and then, uh, a few years later, every time then when Belly came to Bristol to play, she would let me know and I would go along and have a catch-up. And at one of those catch-ups, we were talking about the political landscape in America this is just before Trump got voted in. We were having this conversation. She was talking about how her friends, like a lot of friends and people she knew were talking about running away to Canada, just as a sort of slightly jokey, slightly serious thing. And I said, well, why don't you? And she said, it's important to stand and fight. And that really struck me. Um, I'd say struck a chord, a bit cheesy, <laughs> but it did. It struck me. And it made me think a lot. And I wanted to write a song 
about how I was feeling about the British political landscape and just, just the emotional effect of all of that stuff. And this was during all of the Brexit stuff, um, the beginning of the Brexit stuff. <coughs> and um, so that's the link between the two songs is that I reference that conversation that we had right at the end. I also reference the song Paper Thin in this song. I don't know if you may have noticed that before. Um, and I don't think anything's got better since then. And I think that it's really difficult emotionally to keep returning to read the news, read Twitter and all of that. And so I've had to take myself away from it most of the time. I still post on things, but I try not to spend too much time very little time actually I spend very little time looking at the feeds of that stuff because I just find it so emotionally taxing but this is what this song is about it's about when things get get so overwhelming that you want to take yourself away from everything and the fact that like why can't we just all get along there's some horrendous stuff going on at the moment I've never been a Kanye West fan of his music particularly um not to denigrate his music, I, it's never been, I've never heard, really heard it, got into it. Um, I've heard some terrible stuff by him. And then now he's spouting a lot of anti-Semitic, anti-abortion stuff, and it's just horrendous. And it's like, the problem, the problem with that is that it's evil and wrong. But the problem with someone like that saying it is that he has such a huge platform and some people will listen and some people will take it as being given permission to be more hateful and um, oppress people even more, and that is just disgusting. So, um, I don't write songs that are, that are so literally about politics, but there's, there's, there's often something in there, um, and that's just how it is. You know, I, I my my songs reflect my life and my thoughts and my feelings. So that's where I was when I was writing this song, which is quite old now, actually. This is um, Sea Shaken. <clears throat>
to come and talk to you now. Hello. I look like the ghost of myself at this station, but it's October, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to see what you've been saying to me. Quickly. Sarah says, have you read anything recently which has fed into your creative process? Also, have you read Bittersweet by Susan Cain? If you haven't, it was made for you. I feel like I keep seeing people um, reading Bittersweet round and about. So I'll make a note of that, Sarah. Thank you very much. I've been reading loads of stuff that feeds into my creative process. Um, but I can't remember the names of any of the books. Uh, so that's almost useless, isn't it? I write them in the back of my diary, so maybe I'll do a blog post about what I've been reading recently. Would that be interesting to you? Tell me yes or no. So I make and write a lot of stuff and make videos and stuff. And I always want to make stuff that is useful, relevant, interesting, because I'm not making it just for my own amusement. So tell me what you would like to see on this channel particularly. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'm going to be that YouTuber and ask you to subscribe to my channel because... It is slow going on YouTube, I've got to tell you. It is a lot of um, time sitting here, which I love. I love to make videos, but my goodness me, it is slow. Right, I'm just going back. You've asked a lot of questions. I do sit and read your comments after the gigs always. Um, Martin, I never know if it's Jake's or Jack or Jacques. Jacques, Martin. I, I, I recognise your name and I'm always like, how do I say that? Um, Martin. How is the move going? Very badly. Very badly indeed. Um, uh, this is a topic I have um, decided not to talk about online and on Twitter much because with everything that's going on in the world, no one wants to hear someone whinging about not being able to sell their house. Um, I'm not whinging about not being able to sell my house, um, but it just hasn't, it hasn't happened. There's been very little interest, unsurprisingly, because of what's going on in the, in the world. <clears throat> and... Um, you know, I rented for a very long time. It's strange to own a house, co-own a house. It's um, it's a whole other thing. It's not easy. It's not like once you get one, everything's fine and you're very rich, <laughs> obviously, because I'm not. So um, anyway, yeah, it, it's um, it's not going well. We had found a place that we liked and that's now gone because we haven't sold ours. So we're going to make another trip soon, I think. But we have picked a, a city to move to, we think. So we'll see. See about that. Question, are the hand claps after you sing Thunderclap on Dispensable Body? Uh, sorry, yeah, Dispensable Boy. <laughs> That's a great name for a, type, uh, for a song. Dispensable Body placed there on purpose. Well, of course they are. Everything's on purpose. There's no accidents. Or if there are accidents, I leave them in on purpose. If I leave them in. Yes, of course. Um, question, where did you get the little lion picture that's above the sofa? It looks rather lovely. Yes, it is lovely. It's from uh, an artist called... Oh, he's called The Boy Frost on Instagram. What is his name? I'm looking it up for you now because he's excellent artist. He does prints. If you, oh, Tom Frost. So if you go to theboyfrost.bigcartel.com, um, I think that's his... You, if you look up Tom Frost illustration, you'll find him. He's great. I love his stuff. Question, please, will you sing your favourite cover song? Whatever that is, thank you. Andrew, um, I'd love to, but to be honest, I, I'm not confident I would sing it properly. I've, I've done so many recently that I honestly don't know if I can remember a single one of them. So rather than make a fool of myself on a live stream, I, I will politely decline and refer you to the playlist on my channel of the sad, sad cover songs I've been doing. My latest one is by the Queen Taylor Swift, uh, which I put up yesterday. And um, I did an indie rock version of her new single, Antihero. And I had a very special guest backing vocalist who just turned up. And I think we're going to collaborate again in future. So if you're intrigued, please watch that. It was a very silly day. Question from Michael Record. As someone who predominantly writes solo and has spoken about the mysterious wonder writing in a band, how did your creative process change writing with Rat for Obey Robots? Um, for anyone who doesn't know what Obey Robots is, it's a collaborative project between me and Rat from Desatomic Dustbin. We have an album coming out in February. It's available to pre-order now on my shop, which is shop.penfriend.rocks. It's great. You should get it. <laughs> I really love it. I love what we've made. Um, the creative process was different because I wasn't um, coming up with the source material. So when I'm writing my own stuff, um, I'm holding a guitar or I'm at the piano or I've got a synth or a ukulele. 
in my hand most of the times and I'm coming up with some sort of musical thing that I like enough to start singing over and then I'll develop from there and create a collage and I normally record stuff and layer it all up as I go. With Rat stuff, he sent me a bunch of guitar tracks. So they weren't songs, they were bits of guitars. So he'd, he'd you know, made a verse part and a chorus part and maybe another part that just went on for like an indeterminate amount of bars. Um, and I chopped them up, moved them around, sang over the top of them and then created arrangements, which means adding drums. So I programmed drums and then sent them to my um, remote drummer, Max, to make them sound really good. Um, I wrote bass lines, I wrote synth lines, vocals and everything on top of that and all sorts of different bits and bobs. So that's how we did that. And that's really that was really fun because one of my favourite things ever about songwriting is arranging and, and arranging is where you put the extra bits on. Um, and it's, it's, just, it's different because I would never have written the parts that he wrote and so... I would never have then written the, the the melodies and the lyrics on top of them, if you see what I mean. Like, I do feel like songwriting is so sight and time specific. Like, it, if I was to write a song, if I was to sit and try and write a song now, it would be very different from the song I would write tomorrow morning just because it's a different moment in my life. So that's what I find quite magical about it because if I hadn't done them on those particular days, they would be different. And I'm so pleased and delighted with what we've made that... Like it took three years or something from the beginning to the end of it. And that's not a particularly long time to make an album. Um, but it's quite long. But it wouldn't be the same if it had taken a year. It would just would be different songs. So I don't know. It's a bit of a weird thing writing music. You just have to try and do it. <laughs> Ian Faulkner said, question, what happened to your guest vocalist from the last video? Yeah, she wasn't available this evening. She's actually quite picky about the projects that she'll do. Quite a fussy person and uh, just wasn't available, unfortunately. But, you know, she's in the video. She she mostly just wants to be in videos and not do live stuff, which I, I appreciate. I'm a bit like that myself. Is there, a, is there an instrument you can't but wish you could play, says, says Gavlar 1977. Mm, the Moog Grandmother is an instrument I wish I could play. It's sitting here. I don't know if you can see it behind me. I made a video about how I couldn't get a good noise out of it. Um, it wasn't intended to be a video about how I couldn't get a noise out of it. It was intended to be a video about how great I was without uh, reading the manual, which didn't happen. Um, I am going to spend a bit of time on that. Um, as for other instruments, I, m one of my favourite instruments is the piano and I can write stuff on it, but I can't play. I couldn't play a piece from start to finish, but I can write parts and programme them into my Logic um, recording software thing to, to create arrangements for stuff I'm making. Or I can then make that into notation and give that to a proper pianist to record, which is what I did on... Um, just wondered if you could see my electric toothbrush charging, um, which is what I did on Exotic Monsters. So Catherine Ann Davies recorded two and a two and a bit songs for me, but she recorded exactly the notes that I sent her. No changes. She just did exactly what I wanted. So that was great. I like it when people do that. Um, question: Will you and Rat be doing some online or proper gigs for the OK Robot stuff? Um, I love I love autocorrect. My autocorrect still thinks I'm called pan fried. So that's good fun. Um, first of all, online gigs are proper gigs, but I know what you mean, but I'm still going to stand up for that because this is a proper gig. This is me playing a proper gig. It's real. It's happening. Um, we don't have any plans to play any gigs. No, not at all. Um, Nick, have you taken any precautions to ensure the Obey Robots album doesn't suffer the chart, chart miscounting that be deviled exotic monsters or is it out of your control? It's it's relatively out of my control, but it just relies on someone doing their job properly. So we fired the last company and are working with a different one. That's the precautions I have taken. They've ensured, they've, yeah, they've assured me they know how to count. So we should be all right. Um, and just to clarify, I think uh, I know Nick knows that the outcome was actually positive, but I think that story w became much bigger than the story that it got into the charts in the end. So the story was just that um, the albums that were being sold weren't counted properly, which meant that I missed out on a midweek position. Of, I think it was at number 11, which for someone like me is a huge deal. Um, the album itself did get into to the chart at number 24 which is still a huge deal but it just it 
really affected possible extra sales, a bit of, you know, I don't know what these things really do, but like the idea is that people would notice and go, who who on earth is pan fried? And then, you know, have a, there might be some conversations which unfortunately couldn't happen. So um, that was pretty bad, but I fired them, so it's fine. And James Clark, how important is it to work with other people or is that not important to you at all? It's not very important to me. If you mean collaborating with other musicians, um, I have found it to be at times a painful process and often not not a very um, not a process that leads anywhere. So I've done lots of stuff in the past that never got released, or you know, the bands broke up and stuff. So I that's why that's one of the reasons I love to just do stuff on my own. Um, even if it's going great with someone, it's it's a bit of a pain in the ass to have to deal with someone all the time um, when I know I could just get stuff done myself. So. Um, I prefer to work alone, but I think that it's really good for one's songwriting and arrangement and stuff to collaborate with others and get, you know, fresh ideas and different approaches. So I've been planning for some years a Pen Friend and Friends collaboration album, which I want to start getting in motion next year. And that will suit me better because it will be one different artist per song and we'll do it in a very defined time frame. So I was thinking... I'll say to people, you know, in the month of January or whatever, we will from start to finish write this song and this, and then we'll move on. So it's not like dragging on back and forth with people. So Hayden, it's time for bed. It's time for bed. No more ukulele songs tonight, Hayden. Go to bed. Thank, thank you for tuning in, Kaylee. It's lovely to see you. Um, how far done is Pen Friend album two? It's it's not not far done. <laughs> it's not done not far done at all there's a lot of prep because I'm also releasing the album on my label my big sister recordings um releasing the Obey Robots album as I do all of my albums and so there's a lot of labelly stuff um to do and lots of video making to do to keep reminding people that it's there to pre-order so if everyone would just uh pre-order it now I wouldn't have to do any of it but um it is fun so I've got some more Captain's Vlog episodes to create and we're going to do a couple of music videos as well. There's going to be something going up next Friday, a week on Friday, on Bandcamp Friday. So watch out for that. I'll tell you on the, the email list anyway. Um, if anyone here isn't on my mailing list, it really is the best way for me to tell you things. Um, I'll send you a couple of free songs and some stories as well when you sign up. So go to penfriend.rocks forward slash hello um, and you can sign up and I'll send you some stuff. It would be lovely to have you on there. Um, question, since this stream is dedicated to sad songs, which song of yours do you personally see as the saddest one? Oh, I'm going to play it. I think I'm playing it next. That's one of the saddest ones. But also will be sadder one day. Oh, which is really sad. Um, let's have a look. Have you? Oh, no. Yeah. Do I, do I use a door like Cubase? I do use a door, but it's called Logic X. Cubase is great. They're all great. They all do the same thing. So it's whatever you can, one, afford, two, learn to use, and three, get on with. That's the rules for me with that stuff. Um, <laughs> next album should be called Out of the Frying Pan. That's a great, that's a great name. Um, question, do you use soft synths? I do, Ian. Yes, I use lots of soft synths, soft synths. And a soft synth, for anyone who doesn't know, is a software synthesizer, um, which is where you, you can program stuff or you can play it through a USB controller keyboard um, and use sounds from the computer. There's loads of that stuff. I mix that with, um, in fact, on Exotic Monsters, there's quite a bit of that. I'm, I don't know what I'm looking around for here. Um, the OP1 synth, I also blended several sounds off the OP1 with some soft synths occasionally to give it more of a depth. Yeah, I, I use a, a mix of all of that stuff. It's great. Um, uh, da, 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 ba, 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 ba. Okay. I can't remember what I asked you, but you're saying yes. What was that? What were you saying yes to? I can't remember. Question, will you return to live shows? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I stopped doing them because of COVID and then I kept not doing them because I thought it was too soon after COVID. And then now I'm not doing them because I'm sort of mid, mid cycle, as they call it, because I'd rather go out with two albums because gigging and touring and planning it all is so exhausting that 
it takes away f- and it takes time away from creating new work and I'm, I'd rather create new work but then also I just have a lot of um, reticence because not you lot you're great but people are really un- unfriendly at gigs and I, I it's been so long since I've done one now I'm just like I just don't want to have a really unpleasant time playing the music that I love and so anything I can do to avoid having it ruined for me is uh, really important so at the moment I just have no plans I need to um I want to get this album done pen friend 2 and then then I'll look at all that stuff again because pen friend has never played pen, pen friend being me has never played live in in a room of people and I want to be able to celebrate the songs with you I also have a another quite major issue which is that the um there's a lot of electronic stuff on exotic monsters as you know and I'd like to be able to have some of that playing during live shows whether I'm solo or with uh you know one or two other people because I want it to sound as much like the record or like a version of those um tunes as possible and I can't get hold of those because the person who mixed the album won't give them to me so that is also a major issue that's one of the reasons I I, I'm just playing everything stripped back still because I don't I don't have any other way of doing it, um, so that sucks. But it's just one of the things, one of the annoying things that's happened this year. You know, everyone's going through whatever they're going through always, and I can only just do my thing and worry about the things in my control, and that is not in my control at the moment. Um, bu- 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 yeah, what were you saying yes to? Have you told me? Did I say it's at Okay, I don't know. You're all so lovely. Oh, the yes was for a blog post with videos, right, about books I've read, yes. If you do have any ideas for videos for my channel, I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, I've been putting a video up every week for nearly a year now, and um, it's very mixed <laughs> results, which is fine, because really, you know, the main thing I do is create albums, and that's always going to be the main thing. But um, yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to branch out. Because I've gone, you know, mostly online, I, I'm not doing any in-person haven't done any in-person stuff for such a long time. I really need to branch out and try and get some of this other sort of stuff going. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just haven't quite haven't quite nailed it yet, which is fine. It's it's all an experiment. But yeah, just want to make stuff that people would find useful. So that's that's good. Um, I'm gonna go back and play more songs because um, that that's nice, isn't it? That's what I wanted to do. But thank you so much for being here. It's so lovely. This is it's so much nicer to actually sit and see this. But if I if I have this buzzing by while I'm playing, it's really off putting. I can't concentrate on playing and playing is what I want to concentrate on when I'm playing, obviously. Um I just want to thank you so much for being here. If you um do want to support the project in any way, there's some links in the video description or in the live stream description to um there's a PayPal button. Um, if you'd like to, you know, pay for the gig, um, there's also, um, a link to my shop, which is shop.penfriend.rocks. If you want to pick up the Obey Robots album, that's a pre-order and there's a bunch of other stuff. There's my whole back catalog. There's some new t-shirts, which should be arriving here any day now. I was expecting them before today, um, which I'll be sending out which have designs by my sister which is really cool and surprising because she's only just got back into making art and I'm so excited to have a collaboration with her um and there's also a link to join the correspondence club which is the, the motor I keep saying it the motor behind everything I do I really wouldn't be able to make and do the things I do the way that I do without you thank you so much for being a member if you are it's uh it's mind-blowing really and um yeah, I've got a bunch of new stuff to send you soon, actually, and, and the next bundles are coming. Um, and yeah, and if you do sign up, then the the current bundle is still available. So that's got three remade songs from Exotic Monsters and a bunch of other stuff that comes with it. So there you go. Um, I'm just going to see some more little correspondence only gigs. That's not a full question, Nick. I don't know what you're asking me. Um you can ask me properly uh, ask me a full question and I'll answer you I just don't know what you're asking me um there will be another online gig a public one before Christmas I was thinking of not doing it because I'd quite like to just focus on the new album in December but I think it's nice to do it on a regular basis so some point in December I will be doing another public one um I am doing um correspondence only events every two months so in between the public online gigs 
there's a correspondence only event they'll be different each time um yeah and I feel like I've talked really quickly but I think it's because I'm trying not to um wang on too much when you've come to see a gig but also it's lovely to chat to you so I think that was all if I find any more notes on my piece of paper about what I was going to ask you about or tell you about I will um I will tell you oh thank you very much Martin that's really nice what does this mean? Okay, I don't know where you're on about. I think you're talking to each other. Right, I'm gonna go and play songs. <laughs> play some songs. And I'll see if the big puppy wants to get involved as well. She's um she's in the room now. I'm gonna go over there now with my tea. It's alright, Albie. You're not needed. It's okay. You're not required. You can play if you want. Still here. I'm just turning my cameras on. Hi there, Alps. Good girl. Uh oh. Puppy's disappeared again. She's gone again. I swear she was like the perfect dog before I went away for a week. But perfect is boring. Was it perfect is the enemy of done? <coughs> <coughs> so this is. Uh, to answer someone's question, this is probably the saddest song I think I've written.
I kicked almost a whole room of people out of a gig once for um, talking through that song. <laughs> um, I tried to kick the whole room out, but they didn't all leave. It was a bank holiday Monday in Swindon at this cool venue. I played a few times and they were wasted and just blah, 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 blah. And I was like, and that song's about um, my fear of losing my dad when he was ill a few years ago. We're very lucky that he um, bounced back from that. He was then ill again, but he bounced back from that too. And then he was ill again and he bounced back from that too. He's a very lucky man and strong man and lucky. Um, and I was like, you know, it's a very emotional song for me to play. It means you know, very deep things to me. They all do, but that's a particularly literal one. I was just like, honestly, why are you even in here? Like, get out. And um, please to say quite a few of them did get out. It was great. And then the people who stayed actually wanted to listen. Um, I, I really draw the line at having to be my own security person, but it's had to happen a few times. It's annoying. Anyway, that's probably the saddest one of all. And then this. This is pretty sad. I don't know if it comes across as sad as I think it is on the album, but I suppose this is an alternative version. I wish I had a copy of the latest Correspondence Club zine and CD to show you because it's quite pretty and fresh and green looking. 
but I did those three, <coughs> excuse me, three alternative versions of, it's um, Loving Echoes, it's not written on here, <laughs> Loving Echoes, Dispensable Body, and Long Shadows, the songs I did different versions of. I'm going to be doing some more as well. Um, I always find it really interesting to revisit songs some time after I've written them and see see what they mean to me now and just um, show them off in a different light. So I'll be doing that. I've got a couple more songs for you. If you can hear any funny chewing sounds, that's Luna. She's on percussion now. She takes it very seriously. <coughs> Remember the summer when everyone stayed at home Ships in a bottle stacked up with our lives on hold If we could really see the warnings If we could 
finally getting involved with the family business. Should we play the guitar? <laughs> okay. How great would it be if she was my backing singer? Would that be good? This puppy is so big now. He just wants to lick my chin. You gonna stay there? Probably not. Um, I relearned this song earlier because I would never just give you a bunch of sad songs and no hope. It has to be hope. We always have to have hope. I have hope. Um, go on, down again. That thing about on my worst of days, I want to keep one thing to be kind. That is true. Albie. Albie's now scratching the carpet. Come here. No, don't do that. She's always lurking around this lovely little dog. Good girl. No scratching. Thanks. Yeah, um, the only way out is through. I truly believe that. Whatever's coming, and there, there will be more, the only way out is through. The magic thing about being in a room with people playing music is feeling that, you know? Feeling that we are together as a community. But I get so much of that from these shows, from com um, communicating with you online in different ways. So thank you so much for that because it's been a very solitary few years for me and uh, I don't regret it. I think it's been good in lots of different ways to <sighs> rethink what I was doing, the ways I was spending my time. Um, I was very unhappy touring so much. That's why I quit in 2019. I wrote a big thing about how I was going to not be playing for a while and of course that was then completely taken out of my control which is another thing, it's another matter. And when I say it's good I don't mean not trying to find a bright side in the, the times that we've all been through. I, I don't think that's appropriate necessarily but I think that obviously humans are all about survival and I couldn't have got through all of this time without your support so thank you very much for that. In the bottom of my heart, Luna th thanks you also. Well, are you coming up again, honestly? Come on then. Yes, mate. So, um, thank you from all of us. Albie doesn't get up on stools. And, yeah, I think hope is really important. Um, I, I hope to put a lot of it in my next record as well. <laughs> this dog. This isn't going to work, is it? Is it fun? Is, I, I think it's fun. <laughs> is that the chord? I learned this earlier, and now she's putting me off. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. All right, you need to get down. This isn't going to work. Go on. Good girl. <laughs> she's actually a dog, not like a teddy bear that's come to life. Um, hope. Hope is important. Thank you for giving me hope, and I'll see you soon.
thank you so much for being here. Lots of love to you. And um, yeah, the only way out is through. Let's keep going. I'll see you soon. <laughs>